Hello there. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can self-host upright on DigitalOcean. So first of all, make sure you have an account on DigitalOcean and a domain name ready. I'm going to show you how you can set up a project on DigitalOcean and how to connect your domain name with DigitalOcean as well. Once we are done with those two tasks, then we can set up upright on DigitalOcean. So let's get started by going to the dashboard and on the left hand side you can find new project. You can skip this step if you already have a project created, however I'm just going to show it for the purposes of this demonstration. I'm going to name the project Upright and I'm going to add the same description and you can choose whatever purpose is suitable mostly for you. I'm going to choose web application and I'm going to press create project. Now I don't have any resource created so I might as well just press skip for now. Now that I have created the Upright project, I have to add some resources to it. One of the resources that I'm going to add is the domain name. So in order to do so, just scroll down and click on Manage DNS on DigitalOcean. Here, you have the option to add a domain name. In my case, I've already added one, but I'm going to remove it and add it again just to show you how you can do it. You'll be greeted with this screen right here where it asks you to enter a domain name. And I'm going to enter a domain name that I own, which is bloomtech.org. I'm going to press on add domain and then I'm going to be given some DNS records that I have to add to my domain name server. I use Namechip so I'm going to show you how you can do the Namechip, however if you use a different domain name provider you can check out their documentation on how you can update their DNS records. So we have three DNS records to update, they are of type name server and they have to direct from my host name to the value that's indicated here. So let's get started. Let's go to the domain and I'm going to go to Advanced DNS on Namechip and I'm going to scroll down and delete the existing records because I don't need them anymore and I'm going to add new record that is going to be of type name server record. The host name as you've seen indicated in the DigitalOcean instructions is bloomtech.org so it will probably be your domain. I'm going to add it here and I'm also going to copy the name server I want to point it to which is ns1.digitalocean.com dot and DigitalOcean has three name servers that you need to point it to so I'm going to add two more records of name server type I'm going to type loomtemp.org again I'm going to change ns1 to ns2 and I'm going to create one more record here ns record bloomtech.org and add ns3.digitalocean.com and all I have to do then is just save all changes and wait until all the changes have propagated so that they can be resolved by DigitalOcean. That might take a few minutes or a few hours, but usually they are resolved quite quickly. The next step is to set up AppRide for DigitalOcean and we can do it through the marketplace that DigitalOcean provides. So let's go on the left hand side on the sidebar and go at the very bottom where it says Marketplace and press on the Marketplace link. Once the DigitalOcean Marketplace opens, head over to the search bar and type upright and click on the upright icon here and on the right hand side there is a blue button that says create upright droplet press on that and you will be taken back to the dashboard with the setup to create the droplet using upright you can choose your region in my case I'll choose London and head down to the choose an image section and confirm that upright 1.6 or whatever the latest version is is the chosen application that you want to install through the marketplace and scroll down a bit more and you are going to have a choice between various droplet types and sizes. For the case of this demonstration I'm just using a shared CPU basic plan however you might want to use a CPU or memory optimized dedicated CPU plan and make sure to use at least 4 gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs to have at least the bare bones performance. You can always scale up or scale down the droplet so you shouldn't really worry about making the right choice now as long as you choose the minimum spec requirements. Now you can always attach a volume to add more disk space in case you're using the storage functionality of upright quite extensively however there's no need for that in this demonstration and if you scroll down you can choose your authentication method. There's two ways you can do that either via an SSH key. I do have an SSH key ready for myself however if you don't have one make sure to create one by clicking the new SSH key because I would not recommend you to use the password option that is written here. So I've chosen my MacBook Air and I'm scrolling down to the bottom where I can change the quantity 
but I'm going to keep it to one droplet and I can also change the host name, which is a friendly droplet name that you can view in the dashboard of DigitalOcean. So I'm just going to name it Upright Basic. Uh, you can name it however you want, as long as it describes the droplet and the application that is running. Now, finally, on the bottom right side, you can press on the Create Droplet button and this will create the instance that you're looking for. Now, it might take a few minutes before the installation is complete, so you might want to refresh after a few minutes to see if the process has been completed. Now that our droplet has been created, let's go to the domains and point the domain name to the droplet instance. Head over to the host name and type the at symbol and choose the upright droplet as the resource to redirect to and press create record. That will also take a few minutes to reflect. However, you don't have to wait until this resolves. We can head back to the droplet and press on the get started button here. You are now going to be greeted with a few set of instructions in regards on how you can get started with Upright. We already did the first part where it says get a domain name, which is a recommended way of doing things. And secondly, to set up SMTP. You can use any email delivery service that you like, for example, SendGrid, Mailgun or Brevo or anything else. And finally, if you want to have our own upright storage, you are going to need to connect an object storage available from DigitalOcean, which is something we can do right now by heading over to the left hand side. You can find the spaces object storage area. Click on that and head over to your buckets and press create a spaces bucket. Once you've done that and you chose your data center, you can also enable CDN if you wish. I would recommend you doing that because there's no additional cost to using a CDN with DigitalOcean and you have to choose a unique spaces bucket name. In this case, I'm going to type bloom-upright, which should be quite unique. And keep in mind that the spaces subscription cost is $5 per month. And once again, it's not mandatory to have spaces storage for upright to work. However, if you do wish to have upright storage enabled, you are going to need a spaces bucket. Finally, click the button here and it's going to create the spaces bucket resource that we are going to need in a few seconds. So that has been created and we are going to return to this page shortly to get the origin endpoint that we're going to add as an environment variable to the upright droplet. However, let's head back briefly to the upright droplet by navigating to the upright project here on the left hand side and pressing on the Upright Droplets Get Started button again, and then click on the Quick Access to Upright. As you can see, now you do have access to the Upright console on a self-hosted DigitalOcean instance. So all we have to do now is sign in and also update the environment variables for the spaces storage and SMTP. So before we do that, let's create an account on our self-hosted Upright instance. Click on the Sign Up button here, and pretty much fill out these fields. I'm going to add my name and my business email and a password that I'm just going to choose randomly and click the checkbox here and press on the sign up button. That should generate an account for you and you'll be able to create a new organization. In this case, I can just call it Upright and press get started. Now, this is exactly the same dashboard as you can see on the cloud hosted version. And you can, of course, go ahead and create a project. But in this tutorial, I'm not going to show you how to create the project. All I'm going to do next is just show you how you can update the environment variables to enable support for the upright storage and also update custom SMTP settings. Let's head over back to the droplets information on DigitalOcean. And as you can see here, the instructions to be able to update the environment variables are pretty easy. You have to SSH login into the droplet that we've just created and head over to the root slash upright directory and update the .env file. You can do that via your own terminal, but you should make sure that you have your SSH key set up properly, or you can do that through DigitalOcean by using its in-browser terminal and, and do the same pretty much and go to the upright dash basic and then on the left hand side you can see that there's an access link here if you press that you'll be able to log in into the droplet as a root user by pressing on the launch droplet console so let's press on the launch droplet console and we'll open a new window that is going to try and connect you to the upright instance and here in the terminal you can move to the directory slash root slash upright and then type ls dash a to get a list of all files in this directory and that includes the .env file. You can also type cat.env which will give you 
all the environment variables that do exist as well as their values for the active running upright droplet instance on DigitalOcean. So what we need to do next is head over back to the upright project and then on the left hand side you'll find spaces object storage. If you press on that and you head over to the bucket and click on the bucket we are going to need a couple of things. First of all we need the URL but we also need the secret key as well so that the upright instance can connect to the spaces object storage created on DigitalOcean. And to do that, we have to head over to the settings page and then scroll down a bit and we are going to create an access key. It is very simple to do that by pressing create access key. For the purpose of upright, you must grant all the permissions because this key will not be exposed publicly, first of all. And secondly, upright storage offers a lot of CRUD operations on the S3 buckets and thus you're going to need all permissions for upright storage to work correctly. You can obviously give a name to this access key if you wish. I'll just keep it as the generated one right here. And I'm going to press on create access key. That is now generating an access key for myself. And I'm going to need to use that ID and secret. Now keep in mind that the secret key will not be shown again. So once you copy it and you add it to your ENV file, you won't be able to see it again from the digital ocean portal. So if you lose it, you will need to generate a new one and update the .env file. Now, if we go to the upright projects, I'll open a new tab and I'll head over to my droplet and press on get started and scroll down a bit to the instructions where it mentions that you can set up upright storage. As you can see, we're gonna need the access credentials that was just generated. So in order to find out which variables we need to update, you can press on the link here, which will open a tab to the documentation of upright is going to provide you with a few environment variables that are of key importance. What we should pay particular attention to is the app storage do space access key and the app storage do space secret key, as well as the region and the bucket. So let's go ahead and use the terminal to update these values. If we go back to the online terminal, we can type nano.env, which will open an editor that can change the values. So we have to go and find where the digital ocean spaces access keys environment variables are. You can find them quite quickly by pressing Ctrl and W if you're using a Mac device and typing do underscore. And that will find the app storage do spaces access key, which we are going to update now with the access key that has been generated for us and is available on the DigitalOcean dashboard. It should be this tab right over here. I'm going to copy the access key ID and I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to move on to the secret and I'm going to do the exactly same thing. So let me copy the secret key from here, put it back in the environment variables. And as for the region and the bucket name, we are going to derive these values from the URL of the digital ocean space that we've just created. So let's head back to the digital ocean dashboard and make sure you're at the spaces object storage. And on the right hand side, you can see the origin endpoint. The bucket region is denoted by this string right here. In my case, it is London 1. And the bucket name is this name right here, right before the actual region of the bucket. So let's head over back to the terminal and replace the basis region with LON1, London 1. And the spaces bucket should be bloom dash upright. I'm just going to double check that all the values are correct. Yes, bloom dash upright and it's hosted in the London 1 region. Now one final thing in order to make use of the digital ocean spaces rather than the local storage that upright ships by default with, we have to change the app storage device variable. It has to change from local to DO spaces, short for digital ocean spaces. So let's replace this value, DO spaces, and that should be enough to make sure that we are now using digital ocean spaces for our upright storage. Now type control X and then press Y and enter to apply the changes. And of course, for the changes to be fully assumed by the server, we have to restart the server. We can do it either through power had reset or we can also do it by turning it off 
and then turning it on again once it has powered off. Let's turn it on again. And now if we go back to the terminal, it will say that the console has been disconnected. We can just click on reload and that will open the SSH connection to the terminal once again. We do need to update a few more environment variables. So let's head over to slash root slash upright and then press nano dot env. And we need to change our app domain to point to the domain name that we are actually using. So in this case, it will be bloomtech.org. And the same thing for the functions, it should change from localhost to bloomtech.org. And the domain target should also be bloomtech.org. And finally, in order to update the SMTP settings, what you have to do is press Control W on Mac. And in the search here, you have to type SMTP and press enter. And this will find the SMTP related environment variables, which is the host port secure, which is the type of connection, whether it's TLS or SSL, username and password. And you do have to change these values to whatever values your SMTP provider has given you. So assuming you update all these values, you should have your custom SMTP settings being assumed. And once again, in order to save the changes, press Control X, then Y and enter, and just restart the application one more time by going to the upright basic droplet and turning it off and on the droplet. Let's switch it back on again. And that is pretty much all you need to do to set up Upright to be self-hosted on DigitalOcean. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.